In 2003, the freshman engineering department wanted to become involved in research, and they convinced the dean that it was time to do this. So the dean set forth a committee of professors, and the big push was that people wanted to get involved in research and engineering education, and to do that, they needed to develop a PhD program. In our first year, our graduate program in engineering education started with about 10 students. And since then, we've typically had 10 to 20 students, new students, each year. This year, for the first time, we have more than 20 new students entering our program. Our students do a wide variety of engineering education research, but we can put those into about four categories. The first category is transforming engineering education systems. A second area is broadening participation in engineering. A third area is understanding how engineers think, how they design new products and processes, how they make decisions. And then a fourth area is supporting and assessing engineering education. Teaching with technology has evolved over the last uh, decade uh, for sure, and even longer than that. And I think the biggest shift is that uh, within the last 10 years, everybody can now be a content creator. The authoring tools now are so easy to use and so efficient that faculty can rapidly create uh, good quality materials for their students that are really customized in their class. And so that's been a really big change. We're involved with uh, a project right now funded by the National Science Foundation called the Freeform Project. And Freeform is our name for a particular uh, classroom structure that we use to teach sophomore mechanics and mechanical engineering. So this is a joint venture between engineering education and mechanical engineering faculty with the question uh, of trying to figure out exactly the impact of different kinds of technology in the classroom and out of the classroom and how that affects student learning. And that's the backbone of the course uh, from which students can access all sorts of other content. Most of the students in the first year engineering program experienced two courses in sequence, Engineering 131 and 132. In the first year engineering program, uh, the use of CAPME helps us teach students how to use feedback to self-manage their teams. Our work actually resonated with a lot of faculty who already cared very much about their students' experience and were working incredibly hard to help them have a positive team experience. And so our system actually gives, um, at this point, 880,000 students have had the benefit of a better experience because of the fact that their faculty, their instructors, use our system. Because we're doing standards-based grading, and we're grading against uh, each learning objective for the course, and so we have data generated for how every student is doing on performance for every single learning objective. Every one of those learning objectives maps to a course goal. Every course goal maps back to an ABET A through K, which is the criteria against which uh, we are trying to demonstrate that our program is successful. And that gives us actual data about what's going on in every classroom uh, that actually would show what our performance is like. Historically, research on diversity and inclusion has focused on women and people of color as though they are separate groups of people. But no one has just a gender and no one just has a race, let alone other categories, uh, demographic categories. And so one of the things that we try to do is bring in um, theory from people who study gender and race explicitly, uh, so places like women's studies, ethnic studies, and how do they conceive of the idea of gender and race, and how do they look at them together? Um, so how do we think about the experiences of women of color as being different from both white women and men of color? Engineering talks about solving problems, making things, and applying math and science but they only solve certain people's problems. They don't make things, they design things, other people make them, and that's a class distinction. The boundaries of what constitutes engineering that we're building into engineering education are themselves gendered and raced. And so I see it as part of my job to problematize those boundaries, to help graduate students see that it's not just a given that uh, engineering is about applying math and science, that the problems that they solve are about what are ones that they will get paid for. And instead, let's broaden that. Let's think about whose problems are not being included and why. And the students leave my history and philosophy class going, things I had previously taken for granted are now up in the air. What, what, what can I, where do I go from here? Um, 
I think that's probably a healthy place. The Inspire Research Institute for Pre-College Engineering focuses on studying engineering learning in pre-college environments. Our primary mission is the research of really deeply understanding how people learn about engineering, how adults learn how to provide experiences for children to learn engineering, but it's also critically important for us to take that research and then create resources that are going to be helpful and useful to people. So with some of our research, we develop curriculum, we develop workshops for teachers, we develop resources for science museums or in other informal settings. We develop assessments that researchers can use to measure engineering learning, as well as assessments that teachers can, can use to, to get a sense of how well their students are learning engineering. Um, and then finally, resources for parents or, or other adults. We have our parents guide, introduce, introducing engineering at home, and then our engineering gift guide that's two resources that are more for parents or grandparents or other family members. The need for interdisciplinary engineering studies and multidisciplinary engineering in today's workforce really revolves around uh, perspective taking. And so most of engineering involves um, understanding artifacts and creating artifacts, whether that's products or processes or solving problems. But multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary engineering is about taking perspectives on different types of stakeholders to solve different kinds of problems. Our interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary students are those students who see themselves differently in the world. They see engineering differently in terms of um, how it can affect the world. And they're looking for an opportunity to really make a difference um, wherever they go, whether that's in global policy, whether that's in traditional engineering roles, or someplace completely different like theater engineering studies or pre-med. Today's workforce requires employees who are prepared not just for today or tomorrow, but for the future. Multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary students have these adaptable mindsets that allows them to take on a perspective of lifelong learner. And we feel like this is very valuable, not only to them as individuals, but to prospective employers who can only conceive of what they need for tomorrow. Um, and so employing uh, an employee, an associate, an engineer, who's not only just prepared to solve today's problems, but is really positioned to solve tomorrow's problems, is a very valuable workforce and the kind of workforce that we're trying to prepare launching out of Purdue.